the 1974 super tornado outbreak was the definition of a perfect storm, in all the worst ways one could be. The storm began brewing on April 1st, and as I put it in my video on the Xenia tornado, Mother Nature was preparing for a knee slapper of an April Fool's joke with this one. Over 100 tornadoes touched down in a 24 period of time when it kicked off, and there were a total of 148 tornadoes, seven of which were F5s. And today we are going to continue my little mini series on the F5s of the outbreak and talk about the very first of them and probably the most overlooked of them. The F5 tornado that struck DePaul and Daisy Hill, Indiana on April 3rd, 1974. This tornado did not leave the impact in its wake that monsters like Xenia's tornado did, but it was an F5 and it had the potential. And while it never reached it, it did leave an impact that is worth discussing. So if you enjoy videos about tornadoes, I've also covered the Xenia tornado, the Smithville 2011 tornado, and a very obscure but destructive tornado from the 1500s that most people haven't heard about. So please check them out and like and subscribe if you enjoy videos like this and you want to see more. It helps me grow and lets me know what you're interested in. All right, let's start the story and we'll begin with the backstory, the buildup to the 1974 outbreak. Like I said in the Xenia tornado video, on April 1st, 1974, and I'll summarize the build up here so I don't repeat what many of you have probably already heard, there was a powerful low pressure system developing across the interior plains of North America. And the growing storm was only further intensified by a surge of highly moist air merging with it as it moved into the Mississippi and Ohio Valley areas. NOAA and the National Weather Service were already forecasting a severe tornado outbreak to occur on April 3rd but neither guessed it would be as intense as what ultimately occurred. By 12 o'clock coordinated universal time, a large scale elongated region of low atmospheric pressure known as a trough was extended over most of the lower 48 states. The storms began to form and grow intense as they moved to the east. Everything was just perfectly in place to spawn violent, powerful storms, which could in turn spawn violent, powerful tornadoes. As the storms increased in intensity, they moved into Illinois, then Indiana and Ohio, and the tornadoes began to be produced. And the first F5 of the day occurred at 1920 UTC near DePaul, Indiana. And that tornado is the star of the video. So let's get right to it. The tornado touched down at 3.20 p.m. local time near DePaul, Indiana, a community in the Blue River and Spencer townships in Harrison County in southern Indiana, platted in 1884, and as of 2020, has a decreasing population down to 120. The tornado touched down near New Boston, and it passed west of Frenchtown, Indiana, then traveled through rural areas initially. The fact that it moved through low-populated areas without many structures is one reason some have called it the F5 of the outbreak we know the least about. However, Paul would not be spared like Frenchtown and New Boston were. The tornado leveled farms, demolished mobile homes, flipped cars, toppled trees, and obliterated houses. People who lived in the path that didn't have a basement rushed to the homes of neighbors or friends who did. The tornado ripped apart the community, then passed northeast towards Palmyra, a woman was killed in her home here as well, and the beast grew until it was 1,760 yards wide. Five people were killed in DePaul. One woman in southeast DePaul was killed when the tornado struck her mobile home. The DePaul tornado also dropped a car into the basement of a house after it first completely tore the house apart and blew it away, exposing the basement. Then a car came crashing down in there. The west side of Borden was also hit after the tornado passed Palmyra, but the monster wasn't done yet. It then set its sights on Daisy Hill, Indiana, in Washington County. Farms and any other buildings near Daisy Hill were leveled, and then the unincorporated community itself was completely destroyed by the tornado as it passed through. Still at F5 strength, the tornado swept everything away. Homes, animals, everything. And one person was killed bringing the total killed by the tornado to six. The debris cloud was very wide. Again, the tornado was about a mile wide at its widest and 
I saw one source say it grew to 1.6 miles wide, but I haven't seen that repeated anywhere else, so that might not be accurate, but I felt it was still worth mentioning. The tornado was a large wedge, looking like something from a nightmare, and at times the funnel wasn't even visible, a deadly trick of some tornadoes that can lure people into a false sense of security or catch them completely unawares. Because the funnel one often thinks of when they think of a tornado is simply not visible. It might have looked something like this. Unless you know that's a tornado, some people will be absolutely fooled into thinking otherwise. This is the Hackleberg F5 tornado from 2011. Another one that will definitely get a video dedicated to it at some point down the line. So with this visual in mind of it not being visible, and one not likely very far off given the accounts that say the tornado wasn't visible, let's cover the rest of the story. One woman was sheltering in a ditch, and a school bus landed on her. She was one of the fatalities. She and another person had been riding in the bus when they saw the tornado and took shelter in the ditch by the road. The bus was lifted by the tornado and thrown 50 feet in the air before landing in the ditch on top of the woman. The other person survived. Between 76 and 86 additional people were injured. While this tornado does not have... As many recorded details as, say, the Xenia tornado did, it's, it's still absolutely worth talking about. And it's a blessing that it mostly traveled through low-populated areas, or it might have gone down as one of the worst monsters of the outbreak, like Xenia did. It is lucky that it did not strike a heavily populated area, and thus doesn't have much to talk about. In Martinsburg, 38 of 48 homes were destroyed by the tornado. Morgan Elementary School in Harrison County, Indiana, was also hit by the tornado. Directly. Four classrooms were destroyed in the school, and the roof was torn completely off the building. None of the children or faculty were injured amazingly. They took shelter in one of the hallways, and all survived. The tornado was on the ground for around 69 minutes, before finally lifting two miles north of Highway 160. But it was just the beginning of the terror of the F5s of that day. The prelude to the real nightmare. I don't think we'll ever have a totally clear or complete picture of what happened that day. There's always going to be some blank pages. However, the details we have are enough to convince anyone why this is still regarded as the worst tornado outbreak in history. F5 tornado struck in Xenia, Ohio, Brandenburg, Kentucky, Tanner, Alabama, which, by the way, was hit by two F5s back-to-back, Gouin, Alabama, and Cincinnati, and Sailor Park, Ohio, which... That one is possibly one of the scariest tornado pictures I think is out there. It's a long, clearly visible funnel that just looks incredibly ominous. And that one was also one of a series of tornadoes that struck Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio. Now, I'll talk about each of those F5s in time, but remember that they were the worst of the worst of the outbreak, which spawned a total of 148 tornadoes. And many of those that weren't F5 were still incredibly destructive and utterly nightmarish. And they are the reason that, again, to this day, this is still marked as the worst and most violent tornado outbreak in history. And the DePaul Daisy Hill Indiana tornado was just only the beginning for Indiana. Very shortly after it lifted, this F4 you see on screen struck Hanover and Madison, Indiana. And the same storm later struck Ohio and produced another one of the F5s of the outbreak. After the outbreak ended on April 5th, Jimmy Carter, then Georgia governor, declared 13 counties as disaster areas and requested President Nixon for aid, citing damage totaling $15.5 million. President Nixon also visited Xenia and described the damage there as among the very worst he'd ever seen in a natural disaster. I covered his quote in my video on the Xenia tornado, and it's daunting, to put it mildly. It was also authorized by agencies handling the relief effort that refurbished trailers made for the 1972 Buffalo Creek flood in West Virginia would be used as temporary homes for those who had lost everything. And on April 10th, the Disaster Relief Act of 1974 was expedited and passed unanimously in the United States Senate. But throughout all of this, the DePaul and Daisy Hill Indiana tornado was 
reasonably, given the limited amount of devastation it caused compared to the other F5s, more overlooked. Again, it was a blessing that this powerful monster didn't hit a heavily populated area, something we should all be thankful for, that there isn't too much to talk about with this one, that it wasn't another Xenia tornado. Too many times these, the very worst of the worst that tornadoes can be, strike heavily populated areas. Having one that can fade into obscurity because of all the damage it didn't do is a rare thing. But it was still an F5 that affected and killed real, everyday people, and it had the potential to be as bad as any of the others, and likely would have been had it hit a more heavily populated area, and is thus just as worth remembering as the very worst of its peers from the outbreak, because there were real people affected by this one as much as any other, and that's why we should remember it. Their story should be told as much as anyone's.